Hi, this is Fern G. Z. Carr. Welcome to my Northwood Poetry Reading, Part 2 of 3. For more free writing resources to help and entertain you, please be sure to click subscribe. This is another poem uh, which also addresses homelessness. I call it Chicken Sandwich. Tarragon seasoned chicken breast sandwiched between grilled apple rings, melted mozzarella and crisp arugula on lightly toasted focaccia, secured by a long rounded toothpick covered with rail red foil loops in an embossed styrofoam container, gourmet takeout. A haggard soul taps the driver's side window of a stopped car, right arm amputated at the elbow, left hand missing three fingers, tap, tap, tapping, and beg, beg, begging for spare change. When dulcet words sing from the sidewalk, excuse me, would you like a sandwich? Body twitches and spins around, the victim of the street, cruel dominatrix. Startled eyes inch forward. He snatches the feast between the stump and remaining digits and devours it. A quavering voice behind a long lost smile whispers, thank you. Another quavering voice whispers, you're welcome. Okay. Um, this one, like social issues uh, apply to animals as well. I've always advocated for animals as former, actually, president of the Colonies. Yeah, and, um, so this poem, it's that uh, years ago, uh, there was a very severe cat overpopulation problem in Puerto Vallarta. So this poem uh, is supposed to address the issue a bit, but they, um, they've since uh, had a lot of humane spay and neuter programs and they've made a really big difference in the lives of the, the animals. And another story, when we were in Puerto Vallarta years ago, uh, we were in the market and this cute little cat was following me looking for snacks. And the cat was obviously hungry. So we went to a restaurant. This was my husband. I said, you know what, I'm not that hungry. I'm going to take all this shrimp and I'll save it for later. But in the meantime, I was really saving it for the cat. And I made him walk around the entire market with me. And I actually found that cat and gave her the shrimp. And she was the happiest cat ever. So this is called Los Gatos de Puerto Vallarta, the Cats of Puerto Vallarta. Tourists disembark along gangways and flock towards flea markets, boasting the brilliant blues, reds, yellows, and greens of embroidered cotton clothing. Curtains of trinkets are suspended in vertical garlands from the canopies of tents festooned with paper mache decorations, sombreros, sarapes, and piñatas. Vendors and artisans eager to sell to those eager to buy proffer ceramics, leather goods, trays of silver jewelry, and replicas of pre-Columbian crafts, souvenirs from Puerto Vallarta, a tourist haven, and a haunt for 100,000 abandoned, lost, feral, and stray cats. Bony bodies riddled with parasites forage for sustenance in dumpsters where scrawny kittens are tossed. They hunger for nurture. Restrained by quarantine laws, cruise ship travelers long to abscond with their feline stowaways. Instead, they impotently crouch, close to the ground, coaxing and purring. Ven, callita, ven, here, kitty, kitty, attempting to share their partially eaten senior frogs and shrimp factory meals. A temporary fix for the tabbies, the calicos, the spotted and the brindled, relegated to alleyways and dependent upon the compassion of strangers. So um, this this poem escape. I, I think that there's nothing so so pure as the unbridled animal spirit. And even though this poem takes place in an animal shelter, I, I think it really uh, captures the essence of feline freedom. It's called escape. Piped in elevator music, barely audible, walks through a darkened room full of cages, where luminous green orbs reflect the scant light. Even the dogs have refrained from yelping. They whimper in their sleep while their feet twitch as they chase imaginary rabbits. Motionless, but for her tail, switching back and forth, she continues to stare with a look calculated to project laser beams that zap and vaporize metal bars. Their dematerialization, liberation, recapturing the essence of all that is feline as she slinks into the obscurity of the night. Okay, I promise you now this is my last cat poem. <laughs> okay, because I want to move on from stray cats to house cats. And I just find that cats are such little gymnasts, and not only do they have unlimited energy, but just 
just unlimited stamina and the poem is called one of my girls and her favorite toy and i call it fischenstein you are my fischenstein a relentless little monster who never tires of playing mr fish i dangle the rod and mr fish dances on the end of the line you leap in the air twisting your body in a double axle land on your hind legs and swat poor old mr fish causing him to swing even more Mr. Fish, Mr. Fish, Mr. Fish, glug, glug, glug. Fischenstein, I've created a monster. Now that you've experienced the thrill of Mr. Fish, you just can't get enough of him. You drag that pink fishing pole with its blue and white striped stuffed cotton fish all around the house, waiting for the next person to make Mr. Fish dance for you. Hour after hour after hour. Okay. Um, so now, ducklings, um, unlike domestic animals, uh, animals in nature have to deal with survival of the fittest. This is another true story. Uh, when my husband and I were going for a walk in that uh, Valley Glen wetlands in Glenmore, and we actually witnessed this, it was very surreal, there was a crowd of people and they were all just staring at it. Condos tower over a wetland sanctuary where painted turtles sun themselves on flat rocks. Dragonfly helicopters dart among the reeds. Red-winged blackbirds alight, swaying in the breeze. Damselflies skim the water for mosquito larvae and daphnia. Canada geese waddle in curiously long paths next to the water, glaring at passers-by. Mallard drakes submerge their emerald green heads, searching for minnows and algae. Their feathered bottoms bobbing up right above the water. A female mallard glides along the surface, leaving a triangular wake of ripples that jostles her already imprinted brood of downy ducklings swimming to the shore where she starts to peck at the runt, grabbing it by its nape with her bill and forcing its fuzzy head underwater again and again. Despite the squawking of another female balancing diagonally on webbed feet, flapping her wings in desperate protest against this infanticide, an act so surreal that before it can even register in the minds of bystanders, as more than spunky internal discipline, the duckling floats limp on the water. Well, poetry mimics life, and in this poem, Coyotes and Shooting Stars, this is something that I saw. I'm on the shoulder of a dirt road at 2 a.m., leaning against the car, head tilted upward, gazing at the stars, waiting for flashes of light to streak across the sky as meteor showers spray the Earth's atmosphere with comet remains no greater than grains of dust. Brilliant trails blazing across an inky blue backdrop speckled with glitter in a silent pyrotechnic display. Catch a shooting star and make a wish. The Leonid meteor storm, only an astronomical event of this magnitude could tempt me to stay up all night and bundle up in not enough layers of clothing. So chilled that even the soles of my shoes soak up the cold and I can no longer feel or move my toes. I shiver and shift my weight from side to side in a futile attempt to generate some body heat, while overhead projectiles like the flames of a welder's torch sear through the Earth's atmosphere. Spectators pull up and park along the side of the road for a shared experience under a canopy of stars. A, sur a rural planetarium cloistered away from the lights of the city, their oohs and ahs break the implicit vow of silence respected by reverent observers. A drunk staggers up to us to ask what we're doing. We explain, even though he won't remember anything tomorrow. All is quiet except for the pack of coyotes. I shiver at their ululations. I'm an uninvited guest in their home. Farm dogs howl, I bristle at the plaintive howls, sparking a chain reaction of agitated barking. An instinctive rebellion against vulnerability to predators lurking in the dark and lights that slash the night with cosmic surrealism. In a place where belief has been suspended and sleep deprived minds start to fantasize about crop circles, UFOs and alien abductions while seeking a celestial thrill underneath a starry November sky. Hey everyone, thanks very much for watching. For more free writing resources to help and entertain you, please be sure to click subscribe. 
My poetry book, Shards of Crystal, is available worldwide at retail bookstores and libraries through Ingram Spark iPage Distribution and also from Amazon.